Good afternoon. I'm Jason Rasidlo, reporting outside the Motor City Casino Hotel in downtown Detroit. Coming up, we'll have the presentation of the Crane's top newsmakers for 2017. A decade ago, Alternatives for Girls was operating on the verge of bankruptcy. Today, they are debt-free and on stable financial footing with $1.6 million in endowment and reserves that it pays back if used. Its budget in 2017, yes, amazing. Its budget in 2017 was nearly double its budget of a decade ago, and it has lessened its reliance on grant funding while growing revenue from individual donors. The number of women and girls it's, it provides with its services increased to 435 last year from 296 in 2007. To accept this year's Best Managed Nonprofit Award, I'd like to welcome Amy Good, who has served as Alternatives for Girls CEO and Director since 1988, and whose leadership has helped grow the organization from a volunteer-led project to a full-service agency for homeless and high-risk young girls and their families. And uh, come on up, Amy. <laughs> Here. Um, I'd also like to welcome Gary Dems, the president and CEO of the Nonprofit Personnel Network and a past president of the Association of Fundraising Professionals of the Greater Detroit Chapter, who annually offers his own prize to the winner of Crane's Best Managed Nonprofits Contest. Now I'd like to welcome Ron Fournier, publisher of Crane's Detroit Business, to tell you something new about newsmakers this year. Thank you, everybody. Uh, before we get to that, I want to tell you something really quick and new about uh, Crane's Detroit Business. Um, we have uh, moved from the, the uh, subscription model to a membership model. I'm not going to give you the whole pitch, but my colleagues will outside the door there. There's a booth about membership. You get a 10% off. Please ask about it. That's my sales pitch. I think I'll go now. <laughs> I'm looking out here. This is an amazing crowd. There's a lot of newsmakers out here in this crowd. Um, I'll name just a couple. We have Lieutenant Governor Brian Kelly here in front of me who hopes to make some news in November. <laughs> I've gotten to know Brian through his service and his help uh, with the autism community in Michigan. I want to thank you for that, sir, as a father. Um, our sponsor, Mark Davidoff, who uh, late last year uh, launched something uh, pretty remarkable that he's been working on for a lot of years and I know my colleague Mary Kramer has been a part of this whole effort, the Michigan Israel Business Accelerator, which is off to an amazing start and acknowledged by our governor uh, yesterday. Congratulations, Mark. So Mike has already told you how we select our newsmakers year after year for all these years. This year we added a twist. Knowing that everything we do is in service of our readers, we decided to give them a voice in this process. So we asked our readers, who do you think should be the newsmaker? And we were blown away by the response. More than 1,000 people answered our call. They voted for 15 different people, including five writing candidates. And I will say, by the way, that I was proud to get one vote. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. <laughs> and now for the winner, of our first annual Reader's Choice Award, the top pick of the smartest, most influential readership in Michigan journalism, Art Van Alslander. Accepting the award, yep, do it. <laughs> accepting, the, accepting the award will be his son, David. While he walks up, I'm gonna read you from Sherry Welch's newsmaker profile. She wrote, when you sell the Detroit company you've, been, you've spent a lifetime building into one of the largest independent furniture retailers in the country, you make news. Art Van Elslander did just that in early 2017 when he sold his Warren-based Warren Art Van furniture chain. That was Sherry's lead. Later in his story, she quoted Art as saying that he had no plans of retiring to his rocking chair. David, would you mind coming up and telling the folks what your father's up to? Yeah, how you doing? Thanks, Ron, and good afternoon, everyone. Well, um, Dad's uh, resting at home. He's not in a rocking chair, though, that's for sure. Um, he's, he's received a lot of awards, but uh, this one, this one's very special to him. Born and raised in Detroit, he, uh, he spent a whole lifetime here building his business, raising a family, and giving back to the community. And now he's being recognized by the very people that he has served for the past 60 years. 
And what a tremendous honor to be my, for my father to be in the company of today's other newsmakers. He sends his appreciation to all of you for your contributions that you've made to the great city of Detroit. Today I'm here with my brothers and sisters, and while we have always known what you mean to my, our father, now we know what he means to all of you, so thank you very much. And that's why we're very proud to accept the first Crane's Reader's Choice Newsmaker Award on behalf of our father, Art Van Elslander. Congratulations, Dad. We love you. Let's give him a round of applause on the way out. So in addition to being our reader's choice, Mr. Van Ailes Leder was also one of the 11 men and women who were, named Crane's, who were on the Crane's list of top newsmakers, which brings us to the purpose of today's event. The Crane Newsmakers of the Year is the annual celebration of the men and women who have had the greatest impact on news and on our community. This year's list happens to reflect a particular moment in our region's history. A moment in which political, business, and philanthropic leaders are largely pulling together to make progress on the region's most nagging problems. A moment that could lead to the city's revival. And so we're incredibly proud to introduce the 2017 Newsmakers of the Year. Those who are here will come join me at the microphone to, take, to briefly take a newsmaker question. The others who are not here, I'll read a little bit about them while you go, I'll give them a big round of applause. So here we go, in alphabetical order, we'll start with our first honoree, Mayor Mike Duggan. From Foxconn to Amazon, the mayor pitched Detroit to global business leaders in 2017 while winning re-election by a landslide. For 2008, Mayor Duggan is predicting big things in employment recruiting. Mayor Duggan is not here, let's give a big applause. Up. Martha Firestone Ford, majority owner of the Detroit Lions. Since inheriting the Lions after her husband William Clay Ford Sr.'s death in 2014, Mrs. Ford has been credited for breathing new life into a franchise that has not won a playoff game since the 1957 championship. Accepting the award for Mrs. Ford is her daughter, Sheila Ford Hamp, Vice Chair of the Lions. She told me her honor, her mother is very honored by this award. We're honored that, that you came here and we're honored that she's part of this community. Thank you very much. Next, Dan Gilbert. You guys have probably heard about Dan Gilbert. <laughs> yeah, who? <laughs> Where's Kirk Pinnell? He'll tell you exactly who he is. No, I'll tell you. Now, Dan couldn't be here today, but you know him as the founder and chairman of Quicken Loans and Rock Ventures. Last year, Dan started a con construction in downtown Detroit on the state's tallest building, helped usher through the state legislature a sweeping series of tax incentives for large-scale developments like his own, and quarterbacked the region's impressive but futile Amazon bid. Round of applause for Dan, please. <laughs> Next, we've got Vinnie Johnson, majority owner and chairman of the Pistons group. We all watched what Vinny did as a basketball player with awe and admiration. Now we're watching him conquer the business world with no less fascination. The Piston group closed on the $175 million acquisition of Takata Corporation subsidiary Irvin Automotive in late 2016, a rebirth for the Redford Township based supplier that continued into, through 2017. Vinny, come on up here, man. So, my, my question for you is, is what, what was harder, building a business from the bottom up since 1995 or guarding Mike, Michael Jordan? <laughs> Guard Michael Jordan, by far. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm pretty excited about the, the accomplishments that we have made. Uh, it was all about coming back to the city of Detroit, giving back, creating jobs and opportunity, and we've been able to do that on a large scale, and I'm very proud of that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 
You see that pic I threw on him? That was pretty good, wasn't it? <laughs> Wright Lasseter III, CEO of the Henry Ford Healthcare System. In his first year at the helm, Wright called 2017 the year of partnerships for the six hospital $5.7 billion integrated health care system. His accomplishments include groundbreaking on a major outpatient cancer center in New Center and persuading the Pistons to make Henry Ford's its official medical, medical provider and medical manager of a 175,000 square foot sports performance center. Right? There he is. So, if 2017 was the year of partnerships for Henry Ford, what is 2018 going to be the year for? I have to say that out loud, Ron. Say that to all these people. It's a, it's yeah, a yeah, secret. You know, if, you just tell, if you just tell me, it won't do any good. Yeah, it's off the record. They're not going to pass it on. Uh, 2018 will be the year of more partnerships and planning for our new future. Where, where would you like to see the uh, hospital system five years from now? Uh, five years from now, um, I would say that Henry Ford Health System would be a $12 billion healthcare system um, operating in multiple states. I like that. Jay Green has taken notes and is going to hold you accountable. I'm sure he is. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Jay. Rip Rapson, president of the Kresge Foundation, and Lejeune Montgomery Tavern, president and CEO of the W.K. Kellogg Foundation. I have finished my introduction now. Okay. I got, I got some more to say. This rare joint award embodies a spirit of cooperation. Lejeune and Rip made huge news last fall when they announced a combined commitment of $50 million to tackle one of the thorniest issues in Detroit and this region. That's early childhood education. So I want to ask you guys, you come from philanthropy. Philanthropic organizations don't always get along. There's competition, there's friction. Uh, I didn't say necessarily between the two of you, but I'll take some. Yeah, yeah. What does your partnership say about your leadership styles and what lessons could the rest of the leaders in this community uh, get from, your, from what you two are doing? Okay, I'll go first. Uh, <laughs> So what I would say is the partnership reflects what I think is a level of courage and risk taking. And that's uh, when I think about my leadership style and my upbringing, uh, from a ninth child and 10 children, I've always had to collaborate, coordinate, and, and take risks. And that's what this partnership has meant to me. You, we always say collaboration, and I just want us, as we think about collaboration, to know that that's sometimes dirty and messy work Work, but it takes courage, commitment, and a directness to, to make sure that the collaboration takes you forward and not backwards. Great. I so hate having to talk after Lejeune. It's, 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 it's really annoying, actually. <laughs> Um, I would only suggest that um, you know the partnership and collaboration is often sort of overused. But my sense is that whether it's this um, endeavor or our work with Wright or almost anyone on the stage, the future of Detroit's problem-solving capacity lies in the ability of the private sector, the public sector, the nonprofit sector, the community sector to pull together and really do hard problem smashing. And when I look in, in the room, I see at least a dozen folks who were involved in our Hope Starts here and our, um, uh, our work on, on uh, early childhood in ways that really enabled us to sort of extend the, the sort of the circuitry of problem solving in this community. You've just got to have people on the ground. You've got to have people with resources. You've got to have people with expertise. And I think when I look at the future of our town, I think it's that kind of cross-sectoral partnership that's going to make or break our community. That's great. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So you tell me who's in charge of that relationship, huh? 
The answer is both. <laughs> Doug Song. Doug couldn't be here, but you know him as a CEO of Duo Security. Under Doug's leadership, the Ann Arbor-based cybersecurity company grew its customer base from 8,000 to 10,000 in 100 countries. It made his history in Michigan by raising a venture capital round of 70 million. That's the largest in the state's history. Doug Song. Last and certainly not least on anybody's list is Mayor Dieter Waterman of Pontiac. <laughs> Under Mayor Waterman's leadership, several prominent companies have chosen the Oakland County seat for their new corporate headquarters. She had a role in bringing new industries to the area, like financial services, defense contractors, and tech to a city that was once reliant on the big three. Mayor Waterman? So Mayor, um, you, uh, you, you've been in office four years, uh, but you made your career in your name and your accomplishments as an ophthalmologist. Um, tell me uh, what about your business experience and expertise informed and shaped how you lead politically in the city? My business experience uh, provided an aesthetic, I think, that Pontiac needed. Uh, sometimes the, uh, we need the right aesthetic at the right time. Pontiac had been suffering. Uh, and we were able to restore Pontiac, to revitalize Pontiac, uh, to bring Pontiac and to diversify the economy. Those were the things that we needed. And uh, as I ran for office, and I had uh, was interested in taking out cataracts until I got recruited to run for mayor of Pontiac. And one of my slogans that I think people bought was that I was a candidate with the best vision for Pine. <laughs> so they bought that. <laughs> And I frequently use those analogies. You know we're proud of our car history, our amount of history, and continue to support that. Uh, but we are diversifying our economy. We're revitalizing. I like to tell uh, Mayor Duggan that uh, I didn't get a grand bargain. I envy him that. But uh, uh, we are vital. We're scrappy. We're proud of our history. And we're becoming known now and taking our rightful seat as the county seat of Oakland County and moving forward in a grand way. So I thank you for this award. We'd be amongst so many of the leaders who have been so prominent. And we're proud that Pontiac is being recognized uh, as not an afterthought, but as a city that's moving forward. And I thank you for this award. So if everybody could please congratulate the newsmakers.